Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Pat. Welcome to Fat Faith Way. I'm going to open with prayer this morning. Lord, we just thank you for today. We thank you for the people that have gathered. We thank you, Lord, for our church that you've given us. Lord, we thank you for our pastor, and we just pray for him as well for his health. Bring him back to good health, Lord, and be with him through this journey. And Lord, we just thank you for being with us in this journey too, Lord, and for changing our lives and helping us get out of a rut that we were in and wanting to put you first and putting you up there where we need to be with you, Lord, to serve others and to uh, serve you, Lord. We just thank you for Pastor and for the message he's going to bring today and bless our people that are here today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I was going to tell you this. We're working on getting some t-shirts. So if you would like one, Noemi is kind of putting that all together. So there's two different styles. One has the circle. Eye. Well, you can see the difference. I don't need to explain it. You have eyes. <laughs> um, so we're working on those, get all that set up. Um, but those are, uh, when, where is she at? When are those available? Or when are we going to be able to start putting orders in for them? Okay. And we had another blessing this week. I got a call from another pastor here in our in uh, in the community, um, and he had I ran into him a few weeks ago when on the kids uh, open house thing for the high school, and um, he told me he's from California and came and he pastors Vineyard Church over on Hutton. His name's Cody Busick, and uh, he said, you know, when we were in California, he used to pastor a pretty large church out there. It was on staff and. Um, he said, we used to, whenever there was a new church being planted, we would do a baby shower for that church. He said, so what do you guys need? I said, well, biggest thing we need is some, you know, a sound system. There's something that's portable, easy to set up, tear down. We can get in and out. He goes, okay, well, let me do some looking around and some asking. So um, I got a text message this week that he ordered us one um, with microphones, a cordless mic, speakers, uh, the whole nine yards. They are giving to us. So very exciting so uh, I'm not sure when it'll come in he told me he would let me know but I thought that was just that was really cool for a church to do a baby shower for another church I mean I'd never heard of that before but as yeah I, I was really excited when we talked about it so all right Al you ready could you see it a little bit better today yeah. Yeah. okay I just put on a few chairs to make it a little higher so that way you could uh See a little in the back a little bit better. But, well, we're going through 1 Corinthians, and uh, today is actually September the 11th, on the nose. So today is a day where we remember what happened in New York and, and in D.C. and What part of Pennsylvania was it? I can't remember the town. It was outside of town, but there in Pennsylvania as well. Uh, time for us to remember and, and thank the Lord that he kept many others safe that they could have been lost and remember those that were. You know, at, right after 9-11, I'm sure most of you can remember where you were and what you were doing. Um, I remember where I was and what I was doing. And I remember right after that, it seemed like there was this huge spike in people who volunteered and, and joined the military uh, to try to make a difference. And... That's kind of what Paul is talking about in our passage today, is how to make a difference in this world. And while so many join the military, and, and they do make a huge difference, I thank the Lord for those that have served. Who has served here? I know Dave loves his, uh, I, I make sure the Marine Corps is able to be seen very clearly on Sundays for Dave. Anybody else? Very good. Awesome. Awesome. Well, here... Instead of being joining the military to make a difference, and again, that makes a huge difference. So many of my family have been in the military. My grandfather was on my dad's side, and I have cousins who are in, close friends who are in the military. And, but here Paul kind of talks about a little bit of a different way for us to make a difference in the world. Last week we talked about how people react to the cross. Some stumble, some laugh, some believe, and will experience the power and wisdom of the cross. And as Paul finishes talking about the, the cross, he goes to this great unifier of Christianity. What brings everybody together? What's the thing that, that, that draws us, or, or the, the, the unifier of all of it? So he shifts gears to it. And really, as we read through this, he could have been writing this section to the church in America today. 
because basically Paul is asking us, are we bringing people to church under false pretenses? Have you ever seen that before? A church where people will invite, and, and you think, or let me say it this way, people going to church for um, the wrong reasons. Like you go to church expecting to have church, but you find something different. Anybody think of an, uh, an illustration of that? There are some churches you go to that will never open a Bible. They don't even talk about those kind of, you get a short little TED talk and, you know, make you feel good and kind of leave. And that's, that'd be one of the things that Paul be talking about here, kind of under Paul's pretense, not really being what they're supposed to be. And then he kind of asks us, are we just inter an entertainment organization, basically? What are we here for? What's our purpose? Is it just to entertain people who are Christians? And there's a lot of churches that do that. They're nothing more than a country club. They're not making a difference. The community would never know if they disappeared. They're just there to entertain those who are there. So Paul talks about the, these two churches, this false pretense or, or an attractional church or the cool church or come and have fun and looking to outsiders to, to bring in people to enjoy themselves and to have a good time or the social club entertainment thing for insiders, which is all ministries and activities that are just focused on us. How can we entertain? And the easiest way to tell what kind of a church we are to make sure we're not that social entertainment church, again, like we talked a little bit about last week, is where does the money go? If 99% of the money that comes in that we give to the Lord is used on, well, let's do a banquet here for people, and let's have a, a party here for people, and let's do another ministry for us, and it's all inward focused, then that's what we have slipped into and become. But there are still many good churches that are missional, trying to reach people with the gospel, and that's what we should be. After all, we're the sent ones. The Father sent the Son, and the Father and Son sent the Holy Spirit, and then we are sent into the world, and that's what the Great Commission is. So Paul begins to explain this, and we're in, second, in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, uh, starting in verse 1. It says, And I, when I came to you, brothers, did not come proclaiming to you the testimony of God with lofty speech, he, didn't, he says, I didn't come to you using big, beautiful words to try to convince you, or wisdom. And remember, he's talking here to the Greeks, the wisdom of man. For I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. Or I just want to talk to you about Jesus. And as I was with you in weakness and in fear and much trembling, and my speech and my message were not in plausible words of wisdom. What he's saying here is my speech when I came to you is very plain. I just plain talked it to you. I just was very plain in what I'm saying, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. Paul came by and with the power of the Holy Spirit. We saw, they saw signs and wonders and miracles and all these things when Paul was there. So that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. What Paul's telling them here in this first section of 2 Corinthians 2, he's saying that he used very plain talk to teach people about Christ and the cross. He didn't come trying to use impressive speech or some great wisdom or philosophy. He just kept it simple. And they let them see the power of the Holy Spirit. You know, when you do that, it's how we start our church and what we use to bring people in, whether it's those fancy speeches or if it's plain, simply Jesus. How we bring people in is how we have to keep them. It's kind of like a marriage. You know, if you want to keep your marriage together, how you want her is how you keep her, right, guys? Let me let me say, the way you should be doing it is how you want her is how you keep her. So if you wooed her to get her, you better woo her to keep her. She's not going to stay long. <laughs> That's what my dad used to always say. How you win them is how you keep them. So that keeps mama happy. And we all know if mama's not happy, how's that go? Nobody's happy. Second part of that saying nobody knows, and that is if daddy isn't happy, nobody cares. <laughs> so, yeah, how we bring people in is how we have to keep them. If we put on a big dog and pony show and try to make a, a big show out of things, then people are always going to be, well, what's next? And you always have to top it and get better and better and better. And I'm not talking about doing things in excellence because we want to do things right and in excellence for Christ because he deserves our best. But 
Paul wasn't going to be here forever. He wasn't going to be in this church for a long period of time. So it had to be something, there had to be something more to keep people in this church besides Paul. And we, you can't build a church around a celebrity pastor. If we tried that, you got the wrong guy. <laughs> it won't work with me. But how many big name pastors have we seen, celebrity pastors have we seen even lately fall? They get, something happens inside of them and they, they end up messing up and end up out. There's very few pastors of very, very large ministries that finish well. Um, and it's scary. So Paul wasn't going to be here long. So we've got to figure out how do we build the church on what it's supposed to be built on. What's the important thing? So Paul's basically telling them we've got to build it on the gospel and the power of the Holy Spirit. That's how we build a church. That's how we make a difference. If our church is going to make a difference in this community here in Baser, Kansas, then Paul tells us how we do it in the five verses that we just read. Here they are. You ready for them? Here's the first one. You ready, Allie? Put the first one up there for us, Peanut. We'll never make a difference in this world by trying to manipulate people. Have you ever met the manipulator who tries to talk and talk and talk to convince you to do something that you shouldn't do? It's in verse 1. And I, when I came to you, brothers, did not come proclaiming to you the testimony of God with lofty speech or wisdom. Paul didn't try to convince them by manipulating them with big fancy speeches or trying to appeal to their logical minds. And unfortunately, people try this all the time. They try to argue their point by outsmarting or out-arguing people. Have you met that Christian who likes to argue about everything and they have an opinion about everything and they'll tell you what it is, even if you don't ask them. And they're always right. They're never wrong. And they're going to prove it. I saw this week a guy who was, <clears throat> while I was driving for work, who was standing out at a corner, and I'm not against this at all, um, but he, he was street preaching. He had his microphone up and he was the way he was doing it, though, he was just yelling at people and pointing at people, driving by, you're going to hell, you're going to hell, you're going to hell. And I thought, man, that's not going to make people want to stop and listen to what he has to say. You know, it, 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 or the signs, you know, repent or go to hell. While that's true, is that going to draw, is somebody going to be drawn to that? You know, what, what are we doing? I mean, uh, who's, who's, who's that going to convince it just proves that stereotype that Christians are hateful, angry, mean people. And unfortunately, Christianity has that testimony, because, and for a good reason sometimes, because there are Christians who act like that. And Paul started out showing this group the love of Christ before he had to deal with the tough conversations. And that's the way we should be too. That's what's going to draw people, is the love of Christ. It reminds me of the Christians who have to make a show about everything that they do. Like if you're on Facebook, they're always telling, and I, I remember a few years ago, this the big one was Home Depot, how they were giving money to the homosexual agenda and all of that. And everybody was boycotting Home Depot for a long time. And I remember my dad getting up and talking about it and people holding signs up for it. And, and um, you know, honestly, every secular company supports things that we don't agree with. And where you spend your money is your choice. I, I completely understand that. If you feel strongly about boycotting something, then follow your conscience and you do what you believe is right. But we can't push that onto anybody else. I can't push my convictions like that onto others. And, you know, as my dad would get up and talk about that, and I saw many other Christians fall into that trap, I thought, what about the people that work in there? You know, what about the people who just, you know, are cashier or stock in shelves? You know, they've got nothing to do with that. And they're out there yelling at them and telling them, you know, where, why not go in and try to talk to somebody? And I think we can hurt ourselves if we're not careful on a lot of that. Those kind of things can't define us as a follower of Jesus. Because really, we can't expect unsaved people and unsaved corporations to act like saved people and saved corporations. Yeah, <laughs> I agree, 100%. They're going to act like what they are. They're lost. They're not saved. But the problem is most Christians don't even act like Christians, <laughs> let alone an unsaved corporation or an unsaved person. So we've got to never, we'll never, ever, ever make a difference in this world by trying to manipulate people and being angry and mean to people. 
And that's what Paul tells us here in the first verse. Verse 3 tells us this. Put the next one up, Peanut. We'll never make a difference in this world if we're prideful. We'll never make a difference in this world if we're prideful. Paul talks about it in verse 3. He says, And I was with you in weakness and in fear and much trembling. Paul, the greatest, probably greatest Christian who ever lived, didn't come in acting like he was God's gift to the Corinthian church. Come in with his chest puffed up. Now, y'all listen to me because I know what I'm talking about. And he could have done that, couldn't he? Yes. He's the Apostle Paul. He wrote most of the New Testament with a genius. I mean, he could have come in and just laid it out for him. But he didn't rush in and tell everybody they were wrong and, and that he knew a better way and he knew what was right and they were, they were horrible. He could have done both, but he didn't. And how many times do we fall into that trap or we see other Christians fall into that trap of that they always have to be right about everything. They always know everything. Again, they'll make sure you know it too. We can't be like that. That's the opposite of what Jesus did. Jesus was marked by humility. And Paul was following Jesus' example. 1 Peter 5 and James 4 both say, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. So if we are prideful, if we're arrogant, if we're the only way, if we're the only right church and every other church in this town is wrong, and we talk bad about other churches, that's pride. And we're never going to make a difference in this world if that's the way we act as Christians. So then how do we make a difference? Here it is. This is what Paul tells them. Go ahead, Peanut. We will make a difference in this world if we point people to Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit. That's the only way. The only way we will make a difference. Paul says it. If we read these five verses again, here's what Paul says. And I, when I came to you, brothers, did not come proclaiming to you the testimony of God with lofty speech or wisdom. For I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and much trembling. And my speech and my message were not plausible words of wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power, so that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. The whole point is that we'll never make a difference in this world with our own power and our own wisdom. I can't do it. How do I make a difference in the world? I can't. I'm not good enough. I'm not strong enough. I'm not smart enough. I'm not anything enough. It's not because it's not about me. It's about who's inside of me. It's not about my wisdom, my words, my power, or anything that comes because I can't do it myself. I have to constantly be pointing people to Jesus. And the Holy Spirit's power will rest on us when we live that kind of a life, a humble life, a life that walks with God, that has a relationship with Jesus. And he'll teach us what to say and he'll teach us what to do. And when the Holy Spirit shows up, that's when things change. That's when a difference is made. That's when people look and say, man, there is something different about those people and I want it. far better than anything I could do when the Holy Spirit shows up. It's, it's the words, the mood, the spirit, the attitude, all of it. Everything changes when he shows up. So how are we going to do, how are we going to make a difference in the world? We're not. The power of the Holy Spirit pointing people to Jesus is our only hope. So how we've got to stay tapped into that power. We've got to keep walking with God. We've got to have that relationship and listen to the leading of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Because that's what it boils down to. I can't make a difference, and neither can you. The only one who can is him. So Paul, how do we make a difference? Well, you're not going to do it by pride. You're not going to do it by manipulation. It's only through the power of the Holy Spirit, pointing people to Jesus. John Wesley, who was a great preacher many years ago, was asked what his secret was. And this is what he said. They, they said, what, what's your secret? Why do many people come to hear you preach? John Wesley answered, I get alone with God in prayer. He sets me on fire. And then people come to watch me burn. And I thought, wow, that's awesome. So, Let's be that kind of a church. Let's be that kind of a people that we're alone with God 
and we ask him to light us on fire to make the difference, and people will come to watch us burn <coughs> to make a difference in this community. Our homework. Next one, Alyssa. Some of you had some specific homework this last week. Did you do your homework? I did not have failed. <laughs> but I, I, I did just send myself a reminder email <laughs> that I will call Baron. Yeah. Okay. Did anybody else do their homework? Noemia, did you call the school? <laughs> I don't like this exposing the failure. It's not good. Confess your faults one to another. <laughs> okay. Yeah, the lady that she met with, it's right down here in Baser, the t-shirt place. And uh, she is a Christian who attends a church. She said she just started teaching. Yeah, absolutely. So she's she's got those two designs, but then also she's looking at some polo shirts too. So if you like to wear, I, I wear collared shirts every day, so it's nice to have some of those. So she's looking at doing some of the embroidery on some uh, polo shirts as well, if you're interested in that. So I'll ask the question again. What makes us different? How are we going to make a difference in this community? This is discussion. And next, hopefully once we get the sound system and we can pass a microphone so people can hear it. Because I know people that watch can't hear anything. Put all of you on camera for a change. <laughs> Should we wait? <laughs> You'll be watching it later, so you're waving to yourself. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> How I else? About it last week, and then you even said it today, um, was thinking of things that we can do with the other churches. Mm -hmm. um, I know being from an independent, you know, uh, Baptist church or whatever, we stuck to ourselves just in case they might be wrong with the other churches or something. I don't know really what the reason was, but... Um, and I know we do have to watch all that stuff, but we can get so much done for the, the kingdom if we work together instead of trying to do separate things, instead of warring against each other for, you know, that's our activity and we'll get them there and we'll have, you know, all that stuff. I'm done with that stuff. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's not a competition. No, we're all on the same team. Did I mention the fifth quarter last week? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Cody's been doing that still at Vineyard. So after the football games, high school football games at Piper, he's right up the street from there. So then many of the students will go up there and he grills out for them, opens their church up, and they have music, and they kind of it's a safe place for them to hang out, and they can eat, and it's all provided for free. I think that's a great idea. There's nothing like that here in Basin. How else can we make a difference here? You guys are quiet this morning. Well, I think that the conversation we had about making our presence known at the activities that were coming up for fall and you know, just throughout the winter, you know, I'm like, we're going to go back to this. Mm -hmm. But I think just the presence of being involved. Yeah, I agree. And once we have those t-shirts, it'd be easy to, for people to identify us too while we're serving in the community. Then we don't have to hand them a bottle of water and say, hey, we're, this is from Faithway Church. They just see, hey, that's somebody who goes to church who is making a difference here. I, uh, I had this happen a while back, and I just remembered it this week. There was a, a time I was, I forget where we were living, um, but I went through a drive through and got a, a I don't even remember what drive through or where I was, but they said they handed me a business card and they said the person in front of you paid for your meal. And on there, it just said, you've been blessed by, and it had the name of the church. And I thought that was really cool. Uh, that made, I still remember, and that's been years and years and years ago. Games they have here 
baser. Um, you don't have to just tackle baser though. I mean, the Lansing High School is not mm -hmm. good either. But um, I don't know how many um, home games either the school has, but what about setting up some kind of like a hot cocoa thing and have some hot free cocoa to people going to the games? It's going to be cold in there. So it will be, yeah. Um, I know that I don't know how the school would feel about that because I know they have concessions, so you kind of got to. Yeah. Ask that kind of thing. But Maybe we do it after the game. Something. something. I don't know if there's something we could do to clean up the stands. That's a great that's idea. Show up and clean up, and then At that time, clean up the stands. and then have stuff for people like the hot cocoa and all that. I think those are great ideas. Yeah. There's some good stuff. Or you know what else? <laughs> what about like. Um, Little, you know, those cheap little stretchy gloves, the cheap little knit gloves. Is there any way we could get some of those, like in their school colors that are green, and put, you know, you could put like fake, fake FW on it? Or, That's a cool idea. You know, just uh, mm -hmm. their school color is green. <laughs> right. That's what I'm saying. Their school color is green. Yeah. So, I mean, if you did Lansing, theirs is red. But what, I mean, those aren't very expensive, those little. You know what? I never even put that together that the church logo is green, too. Uh -huh. <laughs> I, I mean, yes, that was strategically planned. <laughs> but that's okay. You, you know, I mean, if we wanted something like that, because we could make, definitely hand those out before people went in the game. Because then they go in there and their hands are kind of cold and they're like, dang, it's cold out here. It's a good idea. Something like that. Yeah, I'd find some place we can get them made. Yes. Could we, um, we'll just call it discipleship, okay, to be with Vineyard and, you know, ask them, where do you have your activities? How can we help you? And, we're not just kind of inventing our own will. We're following along with somebody. But that's what discipleship is, is you, you know, you take people of it so they can grow and then you break off and follow in that. So maybe that's something that we need. Because they're already established here, but we can also. Yeah, they do pipers, but they do, like, they sponsor the uh, Senior Sunrise, got the donuts for all the kids. Um, they sponsor um, all kinds of stuff in the school whenever there's a. An event or something they are hugely involved in that school you know if that church closed its doors that school would know a difference our the community there would know a big difference would feel it yeah it's a good great ideas also on the same note with that uh maybe labor intensive kind of flyers to pass out around the community because that would be a lot of footwork although you could drive but or i don't know how much it is to mail a small Hard, but basically saying we're in your community now. How can we meet your needs, or is there a need we can meet? Or, you know, just that's a good idea. As to you know, because you'll be, I don't know anybody's personal needs, and mm -hmm. we don't. But just you know, kind of like, what is your? What can we do to help you? You know, and maybe they will say something to suggest that we work. You know, pick somebody up. Can we help you with this? Or you know, do you need a meal? Or do you need whatever? Mm -hmm. We're here now, so what can we do to help you with your needs? And I don't know what would be more effective or cost effective, you know, just the little small cards and just a small target this community in the you mm -hmm. know, few blocks surrounding where we're meeting or literally just go and put flyers out in the mailboxes. I don't know. Well it's you just, could also, yeah. you know, start with that the base or post office. Because a lot of people have PO boxes. <laughs> Ask yeah, I don't know if they'll do that for free. Yeah, no, you have to pay a bulk mail licensing yeah. thing or but whatever. You, but there's a ton of mailboxes in there. Oh, yeah. yeah. There's Because we used to have one up there. We can also, I can look and see if they have a community Facebook page that we can introduce yeah. ourselves on to. Maybe. And then Tim can feel all those. Good question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is, what is that about his sex thing? The phone. We'll put his information, contact information right. on there. His contact. <laughs> and next week you can bring so it on redemption. Uh, <laughs> not following through with my assigned task. <laughs> yes, yeah, you've done such a great job. <laughs> 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 He's throwing you right under the bus. Oh, yeah. You uh, know. <laughs> We're meeting here at the PFW, and uh, the car show yesterday. I, I put a car in. Uh, I put a car in the uh, 
uh, Miriam show because they had a $4,000 drawing. And I thought, okay, you know, I had a better chance of winning there, so I didn't come here. But anyway, I'm guilty. So, but, uh, but I looked online, and that Baser car show was to help raise money for the VFW. Was so, it really? So if we are going to meet here in the VFW, it seems like these guys come in after we, we you know, meet, and they come in and get tables and stuff, and it's like, we kind of maybe need to reach out to the VFW, this is where we're meeting at, and uh, see if we can do anything to help them, you know, in the mm -hmm. community, and see what's going on, and kind of, you know, branch out from there, too, you know? Yeah, I talked to one of the guys afterwards last week when he came in, and he said their next big thing is Christmas, okay. or, or was it Thanksgiving? They do meals. Yeah. Um, so I thought, man, that'd be a way for us to, I, I told him, I said, well, just let me know when you start working on that yeah. and See, we'll, we'll jump in. Keep in good faith with them because they're our landlords, you know, and if they're like, <laughs> well, those guys, they just come here and they don't even speak to us or anything, you know, and they, you know, they think we snub them or whatever, then shoot, they might not renew our lease next year, even, you know, so, I mean, we need to. Be yeah. nice and see if we can help them out. And they play the VFW in this community plays a big, a big role. Yeah. What about a fall chili thing or something to do like a fundraiser for the VFW? Like they, uh, yeah. Could do something like that. I know they even put a the VFW when I get here on Saturday, Friday, uh, Sunday mornings. There's a cooler outside. They put ice water out there um, for, and it just says if you need a water, take one, and it's just. For people in the community, if you need a water, you should go and get some. I mean, these are little ask things them like if they that. Have, like a benevolence fund that we can donate. We already are every every Sunday. <laughs> 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 I write a check every month. Yeah, yeah but that's, that's be it. we need to go over and above that. Yeah. You know, sometimes yeah. maybe. You know, but sorry. Oh, that's okay. Since we're talking projects, I have some ideas. My mom and dad's church, their youth last year did rake and run. And you just, they had a pickup, a couple pickups and trailers, and they went around and they just raked people's yard randomly. They had a few people that um, they were intentional to go to. One um, family, the grandpa had raised the grandson and he got killed with mm -hmm. drugs. And um, the grandfather proclaims to be an atheist, but they went there and, you know, they had this continuing relationship with him. Mm -hmm. and it was really, he really appreciated it, and uh, he wanted to give him money, and they refused. But he eventually, he did donate something to the church, um, but it, it made an impact. Hmm. So we're talking about the veterans, you know, on the, you know, are those yards we can go to? Can we just drive around randomly? Um, and when my grandma had um, Mills on Wheels come to her house, when it was going to snow, they would always bring her a box of canned goods. And maybe those are the people... That we can target, maybe the mayor knows, play, or name, you know, sections of the community mm -hmm. where we can hand out boxes of um, non perishables to families for um, bad weather. Yeah. Um, and then uh, the other was this man that goes to my mom and dad's church. He lives up on Berry Road, but uh, they kind of have an elderly congregation, so. Um, they all, they would cancel church. Well, he goes to their houses and shovels driveways and mm. sidewalks so they can get outside um, after it you know, gets sunny and they're not yeah. so in. So those are also, you know, maybe we plan church that day, we're shoveling sidewalks. Instead, instead of, of having service, we do service. <laughs> yeah. 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 But those are some things that had come to my mind this week. And rank and run sounded really fun to me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> The raking, okay, I'm not running. Leave without you. Somebody know. can drive me, but I'm not running. <laughs> you know, that's an opportunity to, you know, pass yeah. the information about the church. Absolutely. You talk to them, why you know, some people are raking. Maybe you're not physically capable of really doing the raking. Yes. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, that's a great idea. It's a great idea. This is along a different line, but I've been thinking about it a lot, is being spirit um, sensitive. And I know you've shown that in the past um, at the other church that you want to do what the spirit wants you to do. Instead of, oh, I mean, you want to be uniform about things, but I told Tim I don't like 
the rut thing. And mm-hmm. but I mean, maybe the spirit wants you to be in the, the do the same thing over. But all of us need to be willing to change it up if he wanted us to do service that day, or if we don't have time for the singing, or we have it at the end, or whatever yeah. it is, um, to be sensitive. I mean, I know you you try to do that, and the rest of us need to follow along with that too. I feel like just be sensitive to him, then it will, oh my, we're, we never do it this way, or whatever. Mm-hmm. We can get into that so quickly, and um, and then it's just the same thing, Then you're just, you know, anyway. Yeah, no, that's very good. That last song that you played, at the end of it, it talked about that. My tradition, my religion. Mm-hmm. You know, Noemi picks the songs out. Oh, that's okay. Well, it's perfect for our conversation right now. Yeah. It's, it's you know, God's got to be first. And then those Absolutely. things are, are in their right place. Yeah, so our first big thing is going to be coming up. I mean, here we are. We're in September. So the next major holiday is Thanksgiving. So we've got to figure out something that we can do. What a what a great way. We're not even truly launched yet. We're really kind of thinking about January as being our official where we start putting signs out and all of that kind of stuff. But how cool would it be for us to even start before January and do something for Thanksgiving and for Christmas? Um, so I, know, I think it was Thanksgiving that the guys here said that they do meals for and that they provide meals for people who need them uh, for Thanksgiving. So... What do you guys think about just partnering with the VFW for Thanksgiving? We'll come in and help them, put some manpower behind it, put some money behind it. And do they do they fix the meal and then the community I, comes in here? I'm not sure. Meals I'm not sure how they do it, honestly. He just mentioned it, so we just need to get more information on how we can do it help them. And they got a big kitchen, that's right. <laughs> Yeah, the kitchen is pretty big back there. I know we did that in Kentucky. We did it for shut-ins, um, and we'd do hundreds of meals for Thanksgiving and Easter, and we would take it to the shut-ins. Ruby, you don't get one of those meals. That's for shut-ins. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe they need, if they do it here, maybe they need transportation to go pick up somebody that is a shut-in. That's a great idea. To come here, you know. Yeah. I like it. You guys all like yeah. that? Yeah. Yes. Got to start somewhere. That's right. We can also focus on one thing. We can, we can keep talking about how many different things we can do, or we can start with something. Yeah. You know, we start with this, and then we'll launch in January. Do something for Christmas, too, for the community. Maybe we work with the school and find some families that need, you know, that have needs for the kids for Christmas. And then uh, basketball season will be starting in the winter time. Maybe we go and we clean up the gym after a basketball game. You know, do those kind of service things starting in next year. Um, this football will be over. Are we going to be putting up a banner outside? Like when we have yes, sir. I got to figure out a size and how to hold it and everything so it's not in front of the cars and we block it. And BMW <laughs> is okay with that? They, they haven't said no yet. No. What about one of those foldable ones like the museum has? Like the sandwich board there. signs? Yeah. Just set it out on the edge of the that's a good idea. We can do those. We're going to have to buy you a pickup so you can start hauling all this stuff. <laughs> so, Andy, <laughs> that's a, this was a question I had last week. Is there any storage here that, like, if, say, if we get that PA, no. that you can just lock it up in somewhere? No. Because that's going to be. It will, but it's just, you know, it'll be one more step of putting stuff in. But I don't think it'll be too much. But, I, you know, we'll, we'll figure it out. I still have some room in my car. A little bit. Gary may have to help you help you with that. No. We just got volunteered. Oh, oh no. so you're being volunteered. No, no, no. For our band, for our band, you know, Gary came up with the idea, and he, instead of like we had a big rack and everything, instead of doing all that, he had like he has the microphone cables and stuff all stuck in, and we just roll those up in order and lay them on top of it, and then he made this nifty thing to bring it in, and so you don't have to like constantly. 
plug everything in. It's just all there. Well, I mean, I'm just saying. Did she just volunteered Gary for that? Yeah. I've written it down. Let it be written. Let it be done. No, but it may get to the point where somebody with a pickup or something might have to come over to the house and meet me and help me get stuff here. So, you know, it's not that early. I come. I usually leave the house about 8:30 to go pick donuts up, and I'm here at nine. So. You want to go 8, 8 30? Ruby's got a great <laughs> shot. <laughs> now, some churches, some portable churches, put everything in a small trailer, an enclosed trailer, and they keep it in there. You know, so I mean, there's, there's all kinds of possibilities. We're just kind of, when we run out of space, we'll figure it out. The Lord will provide what we need when we need it at the right time we need it. So I'm not worried about any of it. It's kind of fun, actually. What do we got to do next? How do we figure this out? You know, it's, you, you, get, you can't be boring and do what we're doing. Starting a church is, is not for people who like... Routine. Yeah. <laughs> you have to have a little bit of a pioneering spirit in you and that drive to want to make a difference and to, to be able to start something and do what we're doing. You, got, you can't be normal. You can't be right all the way to <laughs> Church of abnormals. That's right. <laughs> so, oh, shoot. Well, good. Well, then we will this week, Tim will call, and Noemi will make some calls, and I'll get a hold of the guys here at the VFW and talk with them because um, I have the main guy's number, and we'll uh, see about starting what we need to do to start getting stuff for Thanksgiving to help them out. Um, what they need, how that what that looks like, how we step in and partner with them, and, and the whole nine yards. Any last input set stuff? Who's closing us? Davis. Davis. All right. Dave's up. When Andy was talking today about the, the basic the simplicity of the gospel, it's the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's what it's all about. I mean, that's what sets Christianity apart from every other religion in the world, and that's what it's all about. And we, when we were teaching through Acts in my Sunday school class, Paul went to Athens before he went to Corinth. And in Athens, he had kind of a clever idea. He said, well, I'm talking about the God who you have that statue to the unknown God. And so it was kind of a clever inroad to them, but he was really disappointed in Athens. I mean, you don't read of any big work that was started at Athens after he left. And he was there, and he left, and that was pretty much it. And when he went to Corinth, he was determined, this time I'm not going to go with the wisdom and the clever things. I'm going to focus on the essentials. Uh, and that's what he did at Corinth. And that just struck me when you were talking today about how he knew it was time just to get back to the basics and not try getting together and outsmarting all these philosophers and everything. Anyway, that's my two cents today. Father, we thank you so much for the time today, Lord. It's so exciting to be a part of a, uh, of a work, Father, that you're behind. And Father, you're giving us ideas, and uh, we just want to make sure we glorify the Lord Jesus Christ. We do a, uh, focus on the essential things, Father, and not get tied up in the non-essential things. Uh, Father, we know that if your spirit's not in it, uh, everything we do is for naught. So, Father, we pray that you'd fill us with your spirit, give us wisdom and guidance, uh, and help us to always be very, very sensitive to, to your leading. Lord, we thank you so much for your love, your blessings, what you've done for us. Uh, Lord, we just pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.